What's up everybody? My name is Scott Paddock and today we are going to talk about ad-libbing. Ad-libbing stands for at liberty, which is kind of an improvised way of playing the melody. With my students, I call this the gateway to improvisation because this is the first time that they are going to make up and play notes that are not written out for them. So how do we figure out what to play when we're ad-libbing? It's actually pretty easy. There's only four rules to change a basic melody into a really cool ad-lib melody. Uh, and you actually only have to follow three of them. With these four rules, we'll take the melody and transform it into something completely different. From something like... To something that sounds a lot cooler, like... which sounds like it might be really difficult, but it's actually not. So before we get into our four rules for ad-libbing, of course we need to have a song to ad-lib over, and as you can hear by my intro, we're gonna use When the Saints Go Marching In. It's a simple melody, uh, everyone's heard it, and what's great about it is everyone's heard it ad-libbed and played a thousand different ways. There's no standard way of playing it. So here is the melody to When the Saints Go Marching In. Uh, I'll put up the notes for the different keys right here on the computer screen. <laughs> So we're just gonna use the first half of it. Um, pretty boring, right? There's not really, really not much to it. Like you would never play that and people clap for you and think that it was cool. So let's figure out how to make it sound way better. Rule number one is really simple. We're just gonna add some articulation and some dynamics. You can pick any note and uh, add dynamics, any dynamic, loud, soft, medium, whatever. Articulation, you can uh, staccato it, you can accent it. You can marcato it, you can do anything you want to it, just change each note. So here's an example of changing up the melody to when the saints go marching in just by changing the articulation and dynamics. Rule number two. Rule number two is change the rhythm. So instead of just playing straight quarter notes with a long note at the end, we're gonna maybe play some uh, eighth notes or some dotted quarter notes. We're just gonna change it up a little bit. Here's, a, an, here's an example of change the rhythm. It really doesn't matter which note you choose, just change one note, make it shorter. Uh, and when you do that, of course, you have to make another note longer so that you have four beats in the measure. All right, and so now that we have rules number one and number two, rule number one being change the dynamics and change your articulation, and rule number two being change the rhythm, we are going to add those two rules together. Take a listen. <laughs> Number three is repeat a note. Any note. You can repeat a note and it's going to give it a lot more motion and it's going to sound way cooler. Here's an example. So now let's add all three of those rules together. We are going to change the dynamics and articulation, we're going to change the rhythm, and we're going to repeat some notes. So what's rule number four? Rule number four is add a note. In other words, add a different note, a note that is not in the melody. The reason this is the hardest rule to learn is because students who are learning to ad lib usually don't understand chord structure, um, so they don't know what note to add. So in the beginning, I just say, take a guess. We're gonna make an educated guess, but uh, if you don't know what note to play, try a note. If it sounds good, try to play that one again. Uh, if it doesn't sound good, don't play that one again. So the educated guess part is we are in the key of concert B flat. So we definitely want to play a note that is in the key of concert B flat. Uh, the second part of it is the chord tones 
for your concert B flat would be the one, the three, the five, and the seven. We're gonna kind of stay away from the seven, so we're just gonna stay with the one, the three, and the five. So if you're guessing what note to play that might fit, one, three, or five is gonna be a really good choice. Uh, another good guess, a good solid guess, would be a neighbor tone. So a note above it or a note below. Here is a simplified version of add a note. Okay, so the first time I did a chord tone, I jumped up to a G, uh, concert B flat. So I went up to the one. The second time, I used the neighbor tone. I was playing the fifth, which on alto is a D, and I just went up to the E, and then back down to the D. Take a listen. So those are two ideas if you don't know what to add, a chord tone or a neighbor tone. Here, here they are, back to back. So those are your four rules for ad-libbing. Rule number one, change the dynamics and articulation. Rule number two, change the rhythm. Rule number three, repeat a note. And rule number four, add a note. If you do that to any melody, you're gonna make it sound way cooler. Once you've perfected ad-libbing on When the Saints Go Marching In, which I, I think you should practice for at least a week before you move on to anything else, just so you get it down really, really, really good. It becomes effortless. Then move on to other nursery rhyme type tunes like uh, Hot Cross Buns or Christmas songs are really easy to ad-lib over because you've heard them so many different ways. Uh, the more you do it, the easier it gets and then it just becomes a natural part of your playing. Well, I hope after watching this video, you understand how to ad-lib. If not, feel free to leave me a comment below asking any questions. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe and share it with your friends. This is not a saxophone specific video, so feel free to share it with your trumpet player friends, your trombone player friends, anyone who wants to learn how to ad-lib. Thanks so much for checking out my video and good luck with your ad-libbing.